<laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed me drinking my coffee. Whew. That's for what it's worth, whenever you see a number of notifications that I'm going to start broadcasting, going to start broadcasting, going to start broadcasting, <laughs> please understand that uh, I'm, I'm troubleshooting um, a number of technical and I've had technical, technical snafus out the wazoo. <laughs> snafus and wazoo, those things go together. All right, and I don't, my clapper's broken too. This is Daily Out Adventure number 903. <laughs> Who needs a clapper? <laughs> and I'm going to talk about doing this drawing, this illustration right here. Let's go ahead and move you guys to a more advantageous position. There we go. And let's get my lighting straightened around here so you're not quite seeing so much glare. All right, so here is the photograph. This is a commission painting, quote unquote, charcoal of a photograph that was taken in July 1954. So I was five months old when this was taken. So this is tiny bit younger than my parents. My mom is 94. My dad passed away. He would be 100 this year, by the way. That boy, isn't that something? In fact, according to my theology, he actually is 100 this year. <laughs> I hope that you, uh, I would love it if you, everybody shared the, the hope and optimism and that, that I experience every day in my life. Um, if you want to see how I started, how I began this illustration just go back to the day before yesterday and you can see me start this drawing I'll describe some of the process in just a minute first of all um, I just I traced you know, I taped you know a, an appropriately sized image to the back of this paper turned on my light table light so again you can see me do all this turn on my light table and traced is for the figure, not not for some of the background, but not not all of it. Again, take a look at the the difference, the liberties I've taken with. Um, let me expand this out there. There's the the difference between the um, photograph and what I've done with it. As you can see, I've these trees and hills in the distance. I've pushed back considerably. Here's a rule of thumb. The, you can never have too much atmospheric perspective, okay? <laughs> you just can't. You, I, I'm sure every, I might be exaggerating, but for all practical purposes, no. You can never have too much atmospheric perspective. So I pushed that back. I made this corner just kind of fade to gray. I, the biggest difference I made is over here. I, I darkened all this quite a bit. I started out this whole illustration, I'll, I'll tell you in case you don't get a chance to go look at it, um, by brushing with various brushes charcoal powder over the entire surface. So I started with about a 10 or 15 percent gray tone over the whole canvas and then have worked from there. Um, so where I am now, um, hello Uncle Sixty, they just sat down and there I am. <laughs> Hello, Mar Mills Barrera. Um, yes, I use several types. This is not pastel. It's actually charcoal. Okay, so quick tour. Here, here are some of my tools. An assortment of brushes. A whole bunch of pencils. A lot of redundancy, of course, in there. Um, but then um, I've been using um, four or five different kinds of erasers. An electric eraser. Can you hear that? Not really. Electric eraser, a couple of eraser pencils, a kneaded eraser. This is a little pinch off a much bigger 
ball. Of course, I've been using blending stubs. Oh, and this is an eraser that I've cut and I use that to do detail erasing and blending. I've used this brush a bunch to get rid of dust and powder. I even use a, a little quill pen to prick um, areas in, in real fine detail. Anyway, so yes, a whole bunch. And then, okay, and then, then this whole basket full of stuff. Um, used tissue Kleenex, uh, eraser bags, big brushes, etc. A chamois. Uh, where's, I think I already have a chamois out here somewhere. Maybe I don't. Anyway, sheepskin. So there you go. Charcoal. Oh, there's my chamois. Charcoal is a real bag of tricks. All right. And uh, so this is finishing up this illustration. Um, almost the last thing that I did was I took this down to my garage where I had lots of ventilation and I sprayed it very thoroughly with a workable fixative. Hang on just a second. Let me show you. I'm assuming this stuff is still available. Um, it Blair Very Low Odor Spray Fix. Workable matte fixative spray for drawings. Um, I like the, it, it really is less smelly than the normal stuff. Um, so I sprayed it quite, I can rub it. I'm not getting anything on my finger. My finger's already dirty this morning because I've been working for a while. All right, so why? Did I spray it? The reason is I cannot achieve sufficient darkness in one layer. Uh, I, might not, I might not be able to achieve sufficient darkness even in two layers. Now, I happen to have right here in front of me this morning um, a piece of uh, grayscale that I just copied off the internet, printed, and then um, laminated. It's just a tool. So it, it's sort of a keep yourself honest kind of thing. My black isn't black until it's this black. Of course, this is glossy, so I can't match the glossiness. But a lot of times when you're doing um, charcoal or graphite drawings, you'll get about that dark, maybe that dark, maybe even that dark, and you feel like you've arrived, like you've done an adequate job but that's only because you don't have something to compare it to. So this is here to keep me honest. I want white. By the way, that's the, the paper here is, this is as white as I can get, especially now that I've, well, let me practice, let me try just a little bit, just for fun. Um, now that I've sprayed it, can I get, can I get any lighter if I erase really vigorously? Uh, not that I can tell. So that's as, that's as light as I can get, <laughs> unless I use a, a white pastel, which I don't want to do because it always it has a different feel. You can see the white pad. That's a perfectly valid uh, technique for drawing, but it's not one that I want to employ on this particular drawing. So I'm using this piece of paper as a shield and uh, let's get to work then. I have, it, right before I started broadcasting, um, hello Marcus, good to have you here. Right before I started broadcasting, besides wrestling with technology, um, I have a medium. I've basically been using three pencils on this job, hard, soft, and medium. There is an extra soft, but the softer you get, the more sawdust, <laughs> the more dust you create on the drawing. So it's kind of a, a mixed blessing to use a real video. I'm just going to zoom in as close as I can. For instance, this area right in here is virgin charcoal pencil. Let me demonstrate that. In other words, I rubbed that on there like that. And I hope you can see, I'm not sure that you can, but do you see that that's a different texture? There's, there's a roughness to that. Um, well, it's, it's very obvious here in person. I just don't know if our technology is 
good enough to see it. So I don't want that. This is, just as I call it in the title there, this is a smooth charcoal drawing. Now there's nothing wrong with the charcoal drawing. It's what I call a charcoal sketch that has a lot of that traditional, what most people think of as a charcoal drawing, has that scratchy texture to it. Again, abs there's some absolutely beautiful drawings done in that manner, uh, but this is not one of them. This is a, what I call a charcoal drawing or even more specifically, a smooth finish charcoal drawing. I want it to look like a, a good black and white photograph. I don't mean that degree of detail, that's not what I'm after, but that uh, a good uh, Ansel Adams photograph, shall we say, that has from blackest black to whitest whites and every tone in between, but it's all very, very smooth. Now, I'm gonna take a good swallow Make sure there's no <laughs> saliva. So that's just about as black as I can get um, in charcoal. And I, I think you can probably see it's pretty black. And of course, it's much blacker than, than the photograph is, which of course is what I want. So I really am down to nearly the finish, the final stages on this illustration, I'm going to turn it upside down. I, I'm, I'm working very hard to keep my hands, you can see my glove, to keep my, the oils from my hand off the paper. And working very hard not, not to smudge the paper with my glove or my hand. So I'm, I'm, I'm smudge the drawing, perhaps I should say. So I am turning it upside down, doing it all kinds of things to try to keep the drawing un, unsmudged. <laughs> That's the technical term, unsmudged. <laughs> and of course some of um, some of my, a lot of my drawing considerations right now are purely uh, abstract, compositional, if you will. Where do I want my darkest dark? So I'm not really, at the moment, paying any attention to the photograph. Um, in a sense, I'm... You can see, now, once I've sprayed this, as I have, I can't erase. So all the lights, I, was, I tried to be really careful to have everything as light as I could possibly want it before I did my spraying. Does that make sense? Darker, but I cannot get lighter. Um, there are a couple things here that you'll, you'll notice. First of all, and the photograph is really quite a good photograph because here they are both dressed in white and silhouetted against the darkest part of these trees, except for here, that's not very dark. So I've changed that and made it dark here. So it's really, really a splendid photograph. And um, then even his forehead, her forehead, and her hair is silhouetted by this little bit of sky. So really, really lucky photograph. <laughs> and I have, uh, I have followed that pattern in my drawing here. Completely black, blackest black here and here, and then a little bit of light around their heads so that we can see the, the shape of their head. There's always a little bit of, uh, tension between um, the, the beauty of a lost edge, especially in portrait. As you know, that's, and I see that our, our stream is, is weak today. I am so sorry about that. Our internet is not very strong. My apologies for me uh, blanking out on you periodically. There's always a tension, as I was saying, between the charm, the beauty of a lost edge and the beauty of a, of a contrasting, like white against black, white against black, and dark hair against light. You know, so that's contrasty, especially in portraiture, which is the 
common, you know, Renaissance, typical traditional approach to portraiture is contrast. But there's also beauty in a lost edge. So I'm, and in fact, in the, in the photograph, you really, it's hard to find the top of his head. So we'll see. If I don't like that, I'll come, because I, I just lost that edge right here in this, in this layer. If I, if I decide I don't like it, as, as long as I do it before I, my next spray, um, I can erase that and say, nah, I think I lost his head too much. Do you know what I mean? But um, I can make that decision in a little while. I don't need to decide that. Right now, I say my, my impulse, as you can see, my impulse was say, huh, I bet it would look cool if I did that magical lost edge trick. You know, don't you, that in drawing, in art, in drawing and painting, it, it is always, the act of drawing, the act of painting, is always a series of guesses. You say, the artist says to himself or herself, the artist says, hmm, I wonder what it would look like if blank. And that's a good example right there. I said to, I says to myself, <laughs> um, huh, I wonder what it would look like if, the, the, the couple right now is so pronounced, right? There's, they really, boom, which is what I want, of course. And again, it reflects the photograph quite accurately. I, I, um, the photograph, I, I doubt that it was a professional. By the way, there's a date, July 1954, isn't it cute? And this is the commissioned um, by this couple's, one of their grandchildren is hiring me to do this. So I think that's really sweet. So these people got married, probably lived, had a long, happy marriage, I would think, because they have uh, grandchildren who want a portrait of their uh, grandparents smooching <laughs> on the top of a hill. But anyway, it's a lucky photograph. Again, so many things about it that they're both wearing white and silhouetted against the dark just is, is a, a really um, cool thing. Um, so I think that I can afford a little lost edge up there, I, th I think. Now, I'm going to continue to think about that a little bit. But anyway, as I was saying, as as artists, we're always taking guesses. <laughs> now, <laughs> um, there are some mediums like watercolor where you really can't, you, you, you don't get many chances to uh, second guess. Hang on just a second. I just got a notification of all things that my... Um, phone battery is low. I thought it was plugged in. Turns out it's not, so bear with me just a second. Now let's see if we start getting a, start getting static now that I've plugged in. I think we're okay. You guys let me know if you start hearing, start hearing uh, static. Eds Yandahan says, yeah, workable fixative is something I'd like to add to my charcoal. Good, please do. It's very important. Haven't found it in the stores here in Iceland. How fun. I know, Eds, I know you've uh, talked to us before, I believe. Um, oh, that's right. They are iffy to order online. Yeah, <laughs> embrace, embrace the mess. It's <laughs> exactly. Oh, you know what, Marcus, you say, do I know James Crandall? And I do, are you talking about a painter? I mean, is, hang on a second, I'm gonna reach over here. Give me just a second, I'm over here at my, to my left. Let's look up James Crandall really quickly. J-A-M-E-S-C-R-A-N-D-A-L-L. -L. I didn't know if you were talking about uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I, yes, indeed. He does work in transparent layers, of course. I'm being facetious here, as do all great painters. <clears throat> oh, is it watercolor? No, it almost looks like it, doesn't it? Anyway, forgive me. That's a good question. I like James Crandall. I know his name, and when I looked at his stuff, I said, oh, yeah, that's right. I've seen his stuff before. 
Um, okay, so I was saying, when, when you're working as an artist, you're always taking a guess. And you're, before you do something, typically in your mind, you say, hmm, I bet it would look good if I did this or that, thus and so. And you're taking a guess. Now, there's some mediums where you don't get <laughs> the second guess very much. I'm thinking like marble statuary. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I picture uh, Michelangelo, you know, standing in front of, standing in front of his David, with his with his fingers on his chin and saying, "Whoops." <laughs> uh, uh, but on a lesser, on a, come down from marble statue a little bit to watercolor. So the 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 mediums where you don't get to change your mind very much. Um, you have to do more advanced planning, and that's that's the whole the challenge of watercolor painting, isn't it? <laughs> Is you don't get to change your mind very much. Okay, so I've darkened. I think that's adequate. I've got some work down here in the foreground. Hello, Barbara. I mean, hello, Barbara, and hello, Betty. Thank you for your kind words. Hello, Monique. It's not too not too late today, hey? <laughs> You're not up till midnight like often you are. Thank you, Eds. Yes, Edza is the Z silent Edza. And I'm assuming it's Jan, right? Jan Dahan. Anyway, wonderful. Yes, I do remember our earlier conversation. All right, um, I'm going to add uh, some dark details down here. I don't need to copy the. Fo this is, by the way, this is damage to the photograph right here. That's not part of the picture. Um, I don't need to copy that, but I I like what's down there. So I'm going to negative draw some spaces between leaves down here. Again, so here I am taking a guess again, right? Now, the, the, uh, I, with charcoal, I can change my mind quite a bit, right? This is, a, this is a very forgiving medium. In fact, that's the term that is used, isn't it? It's a forgiving medium. Watercolor is not a forgiving medium. Oil and acrylic painting and charcoal drawing are quite forgiving. Of course, until you spray it, and then it's, you can't undo the, you, the light. So that's, it's unforgiving at that point. But all the stuff I'm doing right now, if I decide I don't like it, of course, I can just erase it. Wipe it up. And I have all kinds of erasers. Um, uh, dry erase bag. And I can dump, I can squeeze the powder out of this. Uh, a... So, so here, in order of strength of erasement, <laughs> this is a used tissue, and then a next level of erasing might be a brush like this, then a chamois, then a dry cleaner bag, and then a kneaded eraser. You know, so this is the least erasing to the most erasing and then an eraser pencil, and then finally an electric eraser. So more or less, that's I've used all of these tools, have used all of these tools in this uh, drawing. The chamois is, might be a new one to some of you. Um, I didn't even know, years and years ago, I didn't know that a chamois, that's sheepskin, I didn't know that that was a, a charcoal tool but it was on the shelf right there with all in the art store with all the charcoal stuff. So I bought it and sure enough, that's what it's for. It's like a, a fairly a mid mid range uh, erasing tool. And I've used it, you know, a fair amount on this uh, on this illustration, as I have used all the other tools as well. And maybe I should have include, included a, a blending stub in that as well, because if you pick up a clean one, a clean blending stub, and have a whole, they're really cheap, as you know. So I, I have a whole bag of them over here somewhere, just in just in this kit, just in this charcoal kit. It, 
it, so I was really tickled uh, to get this commission. Um, the client, again, this is one of my coronavirus special portraits, and, and I'm still willing to do more. Um, I'm working ridiculously cheaply, and I just, I figure I'm, I'm just part of the human race here <laughs> in this crazy season that we're all going through, um, willing to work, you know, much below my normal rate. So uh, if you want me to do a, a portrait for you, it's $395. If it's a close-up, if it's two people, now this, I'm not counting this as two people because it's not up close, but if it's two people, it's, it's $395 per person. Now some of you might be saying, wait a minute, I thought it was $350. <laughs> yes, it was. Three weeks ago, it was $350. <laughs> Guess what? I got just enough business that I said, okay, I'm going to raise the prices slightly, and that's the way it goes. So, and that will continue. If you want to, if you want to, one of my portraits at 300, which and normally one of my portraits is about 1,200 dollars. So I'm working at about one third of my normal rate. But anyway, I'll I'll be glad to do another one. Again, swallow. <laughs> Be careful about blowing. <laughs> if you forget, you don't. You be careful not to, you know, clear your mouth <laughs> before you blow. Next thing you know, you sprayed uh, saliva on your charcoal drawing. That is not a happy moment. <laughs> so watch out for that. Watch out for spraying. All right. I think that's good enough. There, down there in the foreground. All right, now let's. The, I'm going to leave the background for a little while, and let's let's look at some finishing. So I can't lighten anything that's already sprayed, but I can darken things. So here's typically how I how I darken. I put a smudge of charcoal. I take a pencil like this and just rub a bit on a piece of paper, then pick up a. I've probably done, this is the technique that I've used the most for this whole illustration. In the photograph, because it's a bad and cheap photograph, um, there's virtually no distinction of the white in his trousers and the white of her dress. But I know in, in reality that there would be a, dis, a slight rounding off. See that this is... In a, especially in a photograph from 1954, which did not have the tonal sophistication, the tonal range uh, that we expect in today's photo. Even today's photographs are bad enough, but back in 1954, of course, um, this is his far pant leg. This is really, uh, it's, it's, I, did, I, enjoy, I do enjoy so much sitting down. <laughs> The, the fussy, finicky, OC, <laughs> obsessive, compulsive uh, nature of, of this kind of drawing. It's a, it's a fun break for me. A lot of control. All right, anything else? Yeah, her shoulder up here can be slightly darker than his shirt. I made a little mistake on her face, and wouldn't you know I made it right on, I, I don't think you can see it, that I didn't realize had wax in it. Let me show you, I think I'm sure they call it, made by Derwent, and it's, it's a colored pencil tool, but I've got it in my uh, charcoal tool, but it, it, it let, the color is okay on her face, but I don't like it shiny, so I think what I'm going to have to do when I finish this illustration completely is probably use a a stronger uh, workable other than that I might even put on my magnifying glass magnify glasses and um, just pick sort of solutions but I won't do that on this broadcast that's a little too I need more dark over here I didn't have to sit back very long did I Okay, so I'm just, I just want, I've got almost the same color. That's a bad thing, okay? Uh, 
the, the term I use for that, I learned from Bob Watt, along the edge, any edge of your drawing or painting, you don't want a single, so it gets slightly lighter right here, and I'm going to make sure that it gets slightly darker right here, so that then the edge, it, it is, it's, it's just one of those little tricks that if you learn it, again, I call it boundary ratios, that is, boundary is the outside of your painting, and ratios, generally speaking, to be more sophisticated about it, you want a different number on each side of your drawing or painting. Now look down here at the bottom. Can you? Can, yeah, I've got this is essentially the same color, and I'll get slightly darker right there. So I might be able to call that one, two, but if not, I call this one and two. So I have a boundary number at the bottom of two. Over here, I have mm, one, two, three, four. At the top, I have a whole bunch, and over here, I have three. So the, the ideal is you want a different number on each boundary, you want a one. And where this comes up uh, the most often is when people are doing landscapes with a blue sky. And they have, in their landscape, they have blue sky all the way across the top. Here, again, so if there's any landscape painters or artists listening to me right now, learn this lesson. No blue sky all the way across the top. It's uncomfortable. You push a cloud or something, uh, at least a cloud through through the top. If not a tree or the top of a building or a chimney or something, okay. Um, that one little trick. Now this is the rule, of course, Ev and every rule has. As we say, every rule is made to be broken. So, it, of course, it can be broken. <laughs> it almost goes without saying that it can be broken. But if you don't know the rule, and then you're probably just screwing up. Okay? So, know the rule and then know when to break it. By the way, when do you break it? The answer is when there's a count rule. is because there's some other, some other thing at work that, that would make you uh, violate the rule. Right, I have up here, right above her head, I just noticed around them, and that's not, that's not realistic, so I'm just going to take a second and push those down just a little bit. Round. Of course, if I blow dust, charcoal dust, across this white area, some of it will get on that white area. Does that make sense? So we'll and let's look at the, the photograph again. And you see, I actually did most of the drawing on, uh, throughout the entire drawing process. Most of it has been done with blending stubs. Not with I. I'll rub a pencil on it, but then um, follow up. Yeah, I'm taking a good swallow, making sure I don't have any saliva in my mouth <laughs> so that it's clean, okay? Now, I don't have any place here for a signature. Um, I'll write my name down because I can erase this if it doesn't work. Whoops. There, that was a bad start. Yeah, that's good enough. We can see that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's quite quite apparent here in person. So that's that's good enough. Let's take this downstairs and spray it one more time. Now, one of the nice things about charcoal is it's not like pastel. Pastels uh, disappear. Uh, uh, spray fixative eats up. Uh, pastels. It does not eat up charcoal, as far as I can tell. In fact, it, quite the opposite. It tends to make that in mind if you ever do any um, charcoal work. The, the spray uh, might make the charcoal slightly darker, not lighter. Whereas pastel, it makes the, it makes the, uh, 
eats away, so to speak, at the at the pastel. <laughs> All right, you know what? I think I'm done. Um, look, so I have it blow up here. These are her fingers. Yeah, that doesn't work very well. Hang on, just a skewer here. Can't quite tell. This is her elbow. Now, one thing I can do after my neck, my um, make things darker. I just can't make them lighter. But having said that, let me let me show you a at the same time. My regular glasses, and then a um, pair of fairly so it's. A, magnifying this image considerably because I've been saying all along that you can't make anything lighter after you say magnifying glass. Uh, by the way, I do have jewelers, a jeweler's loop um, that magnifies this, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 times. That's left over from my, and pull that out even. So as you can see here, I wouldn't want to do an awful lot of this, what I'm doing right now. I'm just using a sharp, and by the way, I do periodically, I sharpen this little device. Um, it's just a sharp steel point, that's all. Everything kit in a, in a drawer to my left here. I'm wondering if I can scratch through some of the, I made a mistake earlier by using a a burnisher. I quit real quickly, but it was too late. I thought it was just a, I didn't think it had wax in it, but it did. And the color. Now that I've scratched around here, let's pick up an eraser again and see if I can. These are her, two of her fingers um, hanging on to her own arm on the, um, behind him. A little bit up here on the, the base of his thumb. There's a line here that I don't like very much. So what I'm showing here is that under extreme measures, you can actually can lighten stuff through your spray fixative, but it's not something you'd want to <laughs> not something you'd want to cover a very large. You have to work on a very large area, as you can see. It's rather finicky. Now, again, if if this were a different drawing, if this were a, a drawing that I wanted to have white charcoal or white pastel, um, I could do that. That's, but that, in my mind, is sort of a different, it's a different look, a different feel, uh, a different kind of drawing. And for this particular drawing, I want to stick with uh, just charcoal. The, because the, the white pastel or the white uh, charcoal, the white pencil, does not look the same as the paper. And it's, it's, it's a different look. So I decided at the beginning of this process, at the beginning of this project, that, nah, I don't, I don't want to use white on this one. If I were, things like this would be quite an easy fix, right? I just pick up my white pastel. And, of course, you can say, well, I'm going to try to, f I'm going to, try to fake it. <laughs> and I t good luck with that. Um, I just picked up a hard you haven't you got, I haven't used part of the least used of all my pencils is a hard uh, charcoal pencil but perfect for just a little bit of dark detail right here around his fingers there we go
you have to be careful with the hard because it can it can cut grooves push you if you push too hard it will make dents in your paper and you don't want you, those show up so you don't want, you do not want dents in your in your paper not a good look in my opinion so you have to be kind of gentle i've got again a tiny bit of a line right here that i don't like so I'm just picking at it really carefully. And you guys, I'm sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing. I've got about, I don't know, four, five, six X <laughs> uh, reading glasses on right now. Sort of like mild magnifying glasses on my, on, above my normal prescription <laughs> glasses. I am a real fashion statement right now. I want you to know. I would pick up the camera and show myself to you, but it's too much bother. So. And smoothing off what I just worked a little bit. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done enough that you know that I can take this downstairs and to the garage. That is uh, where there's good ventilation, of course, with the garage door open, and spray this have the option of um, making very, very fine, very detailed uh, tweaks if I if I so decide. So, but it might be all done. I'll I'll sleep on it. I'll look at it tomorrow with fresh eyes. I hope to broadcast again this afternoon. Um, there's each one with two people in it, so it's actually four portraits. And uh, I started that uh, last Friday. And uh, if you want to watch me do some portraits, tune in later. Click the bell if you want to be notified when I start my next broadcast. Right? You guys know about that already. Let me look at some of your, some of your chats. <laughs> Monique, glad to catch you before bedtime, my dear. Thank you, Richard. Nice encouragement. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Mark. A lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm glad to add another uh, charcoal drawing to my um, to my portfolio, which is my website, Daniel, dannelsonart.com. If you go there, you can see um, a number. <laughs> Hang on. While I'm talking to you, there's a little speck right here on his arm. Her arm, I mean. Um, you can see a number of both finished uh, charcoal drawings like this and charcoal sketches, both. Uh, also in my portrait page. So it's really fun. Yeah, great fun to but just to, to sink my teeth into some, you know, OCD <laughs> hyper control artwork for a change. <laughs> this afternoon I'll be back to my loose, and, loose uh, oil painting. All right. Thanks, gang. Appreciate your company very much. Yeah, let me move for just in case one of you joined us in the last say, who is this guy who talks on and on and on? That, that'd be me. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for watching.